Hi, this is Brother Richard. <coughs> and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 351. We're continuing with our <coughs> lesson title, The Coming Change, Part 2. Now instead of starting from the top of the page, I want to go down <coughs> to uh, <coughs> the last quarter of the page which deals with events from the judgment to the Lord's gathering because from some of the scriptures that I'm reading I've come to the conclusion it's going to be a rather short period of time and I want to give some scriptures that illustrate that <coughs> principle <coughs> scripture indicates the time between the Lord's pronouncement of judgment and His appearing to gather His people will be short and sudden. Matthew 24, verse 48 to 51. <clears throat> But, and if that evil servant <clears throat> shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. Now the word delayeth comes from a Greek term pronounced chroniso, which means literally will take a long time <clears throat> for. So basically what it's saying here is the servant believes that the time <coughs> of the beginning of the teaching position, the Lord's appearing for the gathering is going to be prolonged. Note what it goes on to say. Verse 49, and shall begin, shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. So it's giving us the understanding that he is not doing this for a long period of time. He's entering into the initial stages of it. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him in an hour when he is not aware of. So it's talking about a time that the servant isn't expecting. He's expecting the Lord to be protracted, prolonged. The Lord comes in a greatly reduced short period of time and reckons with him, deals with him. <coughs> Verse 51, And cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of tree teeth. So this talks about a second judgment which takes place at the time that the Lord appears for the for the gathering. Okay. Any question? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I'm just making sure I understood what you mean by second judgment. Yeah. No. He's talking about he'll, he's going to appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Mm -hmm. right? That speaks of judgment. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, what we find, we're looking at the Lord's prime focus <coughs> dealing with <coughs> all things that take place whether it's the judgment or whether it's the gathering in other words <coughs> scripture indicates the Lord's focus on the evil is their judgment but his focus on the righteous is the gathering. So we have these two things. The Lord <clears throat> lets us know that the prime focus 
is the gathering. Turn to John, the 10th chapter, verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now this is the Lord's prime motive. Even though there is a judgment, even though there are things that are happening, His prime focus is the gathering of the other sheep. <coughs> is the consolidation into one fold. Now, <clears throat> Scripture teaches this is going to happen after he dies and resurrects. This is a principle. It's not taught. I don't even think it's recognized in the Scripture. But what, the, what he's saying here, this running dialogue is his <clears throat> expression of the things that are going to happen after he dies and resurrects. Verse 17. Therefore doth my Father love me because, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Verse 18. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Now what we note, between verses 16 and 17, there's a connection. His desire to have one fold is versed, voiced in verse 16. In verse 17, he begins with the word, therefore. In other words, verse 17 is contingent on verse 16. The word therefore is interesting if you take it apart and look at what it's really saying. The word therefore <coughs> comes from a Greek term. There's two Greek words here. One is dia. D-I-A, which means because of. And there's another word, hautis, which means this. So what he's saying here in the word therefore is because of this. Because of what? Because of verse 16, his desire to have one fold. His desire to gather all the sheep into one fold is connected with his dying and resurrecting again. Verse 17, Therefore, because of this, my Father is pleased. My Father loves me. My Father has given me the authority to do this. The importance of the gathering supersedes everything else. The purpose of the gathering is emphasized to happen after he dies and resurrects. Important for us to understand this. Now, <clears throat> Scripture therefore teaches <clears throat> the current Adamic order will be destroyed in anger. It's the judgment. Turn to Jeremiah, 4th chapter, verse 1. I was alluded about a month ago, I think, to the beginnings of an understanding is how you described it. That the gathering, as we understand it, beginning of the story of the gathering of the rapture, was a greater, I can't remember the word that you used, there seemed to be a 
I want to say greater importance, but that's, that's, that's the wrong word. The Lord stressed the gathering, as we understand it, to a greater degree, that's a better way of saying it, than the rapture event itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm understanding you to want to, want to be wanting to lay out this continuity here, which of course is the whole reason <coughs> we're having all this nonsense in the first place. Mm -hmm. I believe we will understand that. Yes, I okay. Okay. Jeremiah, fourth chapter, verse one. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse twenty-three. Never mind the fourth chapter. Thank you for saying that, brother. Is it truth? Jeremiah four twenty-three. Mm I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void, in the heavens, and they had no light. This is <coughs> the result, of course, of the judgment. It's going to take out the current order. The judgment, in essence, is a preliminary operation that has to sweep away all that is keeping the gathering from taking place. <clears throat> the Luciferian erected illusion that dominates and captives, holds in captivity, the prototokos, the restrictions, whether they be spiritual or physical, all of that is going to crash and burn. That world that was constructed by the Luciferians, which is a detestation in the sight of God, is going to crash and burn so that his heartbeat, the gathering, will be allowed to commence. Based on the significance of the gathering as we've understood it, and our understanding that we're being prepared for a new reality, is there anything that we, the saints, can do to improve anything that could be improved, are we doing enough of whatever needs to be done? Can we get out of the way of the Holy Spirit more to prepare ourselves for these things? Everything, I'm just, yeah. Sorry, I'm just sensing that there's something, <coughs> or that there's, there's more that we can learn, more that we can comprehend sure. to prepare for this. But it's all in us. It doesn't have anything to do out here. Okay. We are the ones that d determine the degree to which we want to involve ourselves in the situation that's taking place. But what we find here, as soon as this judgment takes place, as soon as this condition happens, <clears throat> the way is open for the, the commencing, commencement of what the Lord wants to do. <clears throat> Principle, Scripture teaches the true gospel shall be proclaimed by angels. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel... <coughs> This is the end of the gospel. This gospel, why does he say this? Because he knows that the limited, restricted, watered down version that passes for the gospel today is going to be prevalent. But when this system crashes and burns, the way will be open for the truth, the entirety of the gospel to be spread. We are examples right here and now of the fact that this gospel cannot be preached mm. because organized religion will not allow it. We've been doing this for 30 years in restriction. When we speak 
the truth of the scripture. Not what we're saying, what can be proved in the scripture, it's shut down. You find that for yourself. I do it for that. <laughs> Not you do. Yes. So when this restriction is eliminated, one of the first things that's going to happen <clears throat> is God's word is going to be free to be spread abroad the whole world. Mm. <clears throat> And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. In other words, he's going to show, this is all nations, the remnants of the Christians that have been feeding off of the pablum that passes for religion, that passes for Christianity, they're going to hear the truth. All others that have been listening to Islam, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, they're going to hear the truth. And out of all of them will come the <coughs> repositors that will comprise the elder group. The Matthew 24 saint who up until this point of being Osiris has believed in the world that he could see thought that reading the Bible a couple of times a week was that, that, that's, that's all he needed and had full understanding once the influence increases the Luciferian influence increases and the uh, reality shifts Will it not be harder for him to become a martyr? No, <clears throat> because the Father is not going to allow it. The Father is going to allow the truth to go freely, unhindered, for a time. This gospel is preached. Because it goes on to say, Then shall the end come. Mm -hmm. So the gospel is going to be preached, and for the first time, everybody is going to have the ability to objectively receive it, accept it or reject it. Doesn't that same person, because he has the Holy Spirit in him, see a significant change spiritually in himself? Sure. And it's sure. that, and it's that Inevitably, allows, yes. Okay, and it's that which allows him to say, look, I'm going to throw all this down. Definitely, gonna, yes. Yeah. It's something he's wanting to hear. He hadn't heard before. Mm -hmm. It's going to resonate with his spirit and it's going to open the, the, the doors of what's been imprisoning him. He's going to step forward and embrace it. Yes. I'm afraid, Mr. Jones, when that revealing happens to a person, not many of them know that's the Holy Spirit quickening you into understanding, giving you understanding. They're going to <coughs> look for, okay, I understand that differently now, but I don't recognize why because nobody's taught me. As well. Well, that's the human logic of it. But the Spirit is going to instantaneously embrace it. And they're going to, just like when Jesus walked by the disciples and follow me. They didn't have time to reason it out. Sure. They just responded. Sure. That's the same thing that's going to happen here. <clears throat> because of Prototokos. If the Father has made that connection already, then yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. <clears throat> well, let's go on. And you see, the result of that Turn to Revelation, 5th chapter, verse And they sung a new song, singing, Thou art worthy to take the book, <clears throat> and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God, by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. They got redeemed in Matthew 24, verse 14. The gospel went to every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. It responded, <clears throat> resonated, with the spirits of the Prototokos, they accepted it instantaneously. They walked free. <clears throat> I 
at that point, that's when we come into the picture. We will be designated the feeders of those who now need to be fed. <clears throat> Matthew 24. Verse <clears throat> forty five. <clears throat> Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath? made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. This is when the X, Y axis crosses for the prototypist teacher. You are not going to have a repetition of what we have now. Where you speak the truth, you show them a scripture that <clears throat> puts into question what they have been given as an interpretation, they can see it for themselves and they don't want to receive it. They can find all kinds of excuses to run away from it or ask an authority about it to confirm what it's not saying, what it actually is. You're not going to run into that. They're going to run to you. You're going to be so busy <coughs> ministering to hungry people that for the first time experienced the Word of God in its entirety. Absolutely. Yes. So there won't be false teachers at the time? Later. Later. You can't have false teachers until you preach the truth. Mm -hmm. The false preachers, the false prophets, <clears throat> didn't arise in the church until Paul preached the, real, the regular gospel. Then they came in behind it. Yeah, you're going to have false pro 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 prophets, false teachers, and all that, but it's not going to happen then. <clears throat> and they're going to hear the truth first, and then... You're going to hit the falls. We're experiencing that already, aren't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, so we see the, the order of things happening here. <clears throat> the way is made open by the judgment. The truth begins to go forth. It's heard. <clears throat> it's responded to. This initiates the start of the teaching of those sheep. Now, Scripture <coughs> indicates soon after that the Lord will appear to gather His people. Luke 21, verse 25 to 27. There shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. The creation is going to go into convulsions shortly after that. Precluding the appearing of the Creator. Man's hearts failing them for fear, Looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The vestiges of the principalities in the heavens are going to be shaken out of their abodes, taken captive in the neither parts of the earth. And the way is going to be wide open for the gathering. Verse 27, Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Then shall they see. He will appear. Now, this passage of Scripture, 27, is the key of many other passages of Scripture. <clears throat> many other. Turn to Psalms 50.
verses <coughs> 2 to 5. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come, shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, it shall be very tempestuous about him. They're going to see him come in his glory. Everybody is going to see. He shall call to the heavens from above, and to the earth, that he may judge his people. We're going to get back to that momentarily. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The gathering, the gathering, the gathering. Gather my saints to me. Who is he speaking to? Those in the heavens that are going to be the instruments used on the earth for the gathering. Now, Turn to Luke 17. <clears throat> Starting in verse 30. Even now shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, when He appears, when He comes for the gathering. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and the stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Now the Lord gives different <coughs> descriptions of people in different locations when this happens. The whole earth is going to see the same thing. Him descending in glory. <coughs> the world has reached a degree of stability because you have the Luciferians who are dominating the earth, fourth empire, and you have the communities under the Luciferians that are now worshiping the gods and all the rest of that. <coughs> They're all going to witness this one event, him descending. He's talking about the individual. <coughs> this guy's a Christian, but he didn't do what he's supposed to do. He spent his time, like the wicked servant, ingratiating himself, collecting things, stuff, getting... Um, A position in this Luciferian society. The Lord says, when this guy sees what's taking place, he better give it all up and get ready to get out of Dodge while he still can, because sudden destruction is going to come on him. Verse 29 says, Lot went out of Sodom at rain, fire and brimstone from heaven, destroyed them all. Mm -hmm. Verse 30, even thus shall it be in the name. So we understand that the physical manifestation of the time of Lot will be present when the rule returns to the gathering. He's talking about <coughs> he's using it from the state stage of being aware and what will happen to people that are not aware. The suddenness that destruction is going to come okay. on them. Right, but not necessarily the physical manifestation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> this is a warning to Christians to not stray and keep your focus on events that are going to take place. This is, he's saying this is the way the Father has laid out his schedule. This is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to you can You can receive it or reject it. But if you reject it, you're going to be one of these people that wind up paying a penalty for it mm -hmm. when it falls. <clears throat> then he goes on. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Luke 
17. <clears throat> Verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in that night, there shall be two in one bed, one shall be taken, the other left. 35. Two shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, the other left. <clears throat> two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. And he answered the sinner to him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Whithersoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. What, is we, what did we read in Psalms 50? Gather my saints together unto me. These are the leaders, the teachers, that are being gathered to the Lord's presence to receive their rewards and positions. <coughs> That's one aspect of it. And there's another aspect of it. Turn to Deuteronomy So we're going to do 8 to 10. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 32. This is when <clears throat> you get the uh, <clears throat> the exodus, the 12 tribes, out of the former regions back to the land of Israel. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So the Lord's dividing the descendants of Adam, basically the elder group, their inheritances, the communities. Thou hast redeemed us out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Well, they're going to be gathered to the community out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation to be taught to be prepared for the rapture. <clears throat> Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob. <clears throat> Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness he led him about, instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. This is YHVH. The Lord delegates him to take the ten tribes out of wherever it is <clears throat> in the ruins of the former Adamic order back to the land. As he takes them, he instructs them in the Mosaic law, preparing them for entrance into that society. Now, what we find... <coughs> Mr. Charles, i got to ask this. Yeah, okay. So there's no Messianic Jews in that group? No. <coughs> Messianic Jews would be gathered with... <coughs> that's the one tribe that Jesus is talking about. It's going to be gathered to the fold of the non-Jews. They'll be <coughs> in the community of the... Saints. This is the vision here. <clears throat> all that are prototokias are going to be in one group. All that are not are going to be in the rest of the division of the human race. <clears throat> the Jewish comp component is in Israel. Those under the Luciferians are in their places. The human race 
constituting the elder group is going to be in their place. Jesus is going to sort everything where it's supposed to go. In that respect, what we're going to find <coughs> Matthew 24. <coughs> we'll close with this. Forty-six to forty-seven. <clears throat> this is Brother Tokus, teacher. He's been taken where he was now to receive his inheritance. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. When the community is established, <coughs> the star group is now receiving its inheritance. They are now going to establish authority over the churches. Ephesians, I know I was going to say it was close, but turn to Ephesians 1. This is what Paul is summarizing. Sum, when you say scriptures. the star group, you're referring to those priests, angels who become angels. Okay. Yes. I'm rephrasing it because some people may think you're uh, saying something else. Uh, now, yeah, this is the door of stars. Yeah. This is a star group of the churches right. of Revelation, <coughs> the first chapter. <coughs> Ephesians, the first chapter. Verses 10 and 11. Then in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So the gathering <coughs> includes those in the heavens and includes those on the earth to a connection in Christ. What is this connection going to result in? Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. It results in us receiving our inheritance. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <clears throat> so this is what basically as I see it. You have the judgment. <coughs> then very quickly you're going to have the return of the Lord to gather. The gathering will include reconstituting the church communities. It will include the inheritance of the star group over the churches. It will include the onset of apostles and prophets on the earth overseeing the church communities. So it's going to be <coughs> a thing that will take place in to a great degree rapid succession. What the Lord wants to do <coughs> is to give his people what they haven't been given in 2,000 years. The whole Council of the will of God. So that priest, uh, Matthew 24, 48 to 51, that evil servant, his evilness happens from when to when? From the <coughs> beginning of sorrows to the appearing of the Lord. To the end of the gathering. 
not until the beginning of the gathering. That's when he goes out. The beginning of the size to the beginning of the gathering. I'm talking about the evil side. That's what I'm talking about. When does he perpetrate his evil uh, <coughs> behavior? He's spared from the original judgment. Okay. Because he's called, just okay. like the good, wise servant. Mm -hmm. They begin to operate. Those that are faithful feed God's people. Okay. Those that are the evil servant take advantage of God's people. So as he begins to smite his fellow servant, begins to eat and drink with the drunk. There's a time of stability. Remember the fourth empire takes over. <coughs> they bring a Luciferian stability to the world. Luciferian societies. Within these Luciferian societies, you're going to have places of preservation by Elohim. So coming back to the, then he begins to smite. Timeline is what I'm trying to drive at. That's a, that, that happens towards the end of the feeding his sheep period. <clears throat> Not the end. It starts at the beginning. You begin to teach. You begin to take advantage. You see, verses for, for, uh, was it 47 and 48 are in the same continue, time continuum. Okay. That good and faithful servant, when his Lord comes, finding him doing, is going to reward him. I, go, go ahead. No, no, go. The evil servant, they both been working the same time. Right. It is in a sh it's a short time. A short time from when he becomes evil, or a short time when he's doing what he should have been doing. A short time from the time that the that the group was set in motion. A short time from the time the X Y axis crossed, okay. and the faithful servant began to feed. That's the time the evil servant going to begin to misuse his authority. Right. So then, that's going to proceed for a short time. Well, okay, I was about to say an even shorter period of time because it's he doesn't do it exactly at the same time that the uh, faithful servant begins. He, he's a faithful servant for a period of time. No. He's never ever a no, faithful servant. No, no. He never answers his call. Not once. He's put in a position to do it. He makes the wrong decision. So hang on a second. Yeah. So, I won't use our group, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another group who are doing exactly what we're doing right now, that evil, if we can put that evil servant into that group. The, the big, okay. <coughs> Judgment falls. Mm -hmm. Bang. Everything's wiped out, mm. with the exception of places that are preserved. Why are they preserved? Because the Lord has to have a place in which <coughs> the faithful servant can feed his sheep. You can't do it on the run. You can't do it while you're busy trying to survive. The Lord, during the judgment, is going to... <coughs> is going to lead that individual into that place where his calling can commence. He's feeding God's sheep. The same time, along with that servant, his compatriot comes in. They both get the opportunity at the same time to feed God's sheep. One makes the right decision, the other makes the wrong okay. decision. Okay. So he the uh, evil servant was faithful up until the point where he graduated to go and feed the sheep. Mm -hmm. And from his graduation day, he never actually did any feeding. He never actually did anything when his calling came into being. Right. He sees that he's preserved. He sees that his needs are being there met. Is, okay. it, in order to drink and eat, you have to have substance. So this is a region that's preserved, in which other people are there also, mm -hmm. but virtue of the fact that they're, they're achieving whatever it is they need to achieve, that's why they're there. They're going to support the servants that are feeding. They're going to provide. They're going to be the ones that make the thing operate. Well, we talked about this last night. Mr. Jones, it's hard for me to picture Somebody being selected to be gathered, okay? And then all of a sudden, he, he realizes that he, 
things have changed, but he feels like he wants a upgrade. He wants to be upgraded. And so he becomes an authority over the people that he that he's over and, and starts hitting them and, and also thinks it's okay to have a drink now and then. So what's amazing to me is how does a person go where he's actually selected to, to make the gathering? He is actually being get rid of the human nature. I mean, it's strong, yet he, he gets sucked into you know, drinking, eating, and drinking with the with Mr. Jones. It's hard for me. Hard to imagine. to imagine, yes, but it's true. Remember what the scripture says: "He that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne." It also calls out <coughs> an overcomer <coughs> will receive, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. So you're going to have prototokias that don't make it. They succumb to the temptations of a particular time, a particular place. But, well, actually not necessarily. I was about to say, what chances are there of that for the 1851 uh, priest becoming a martyr? But we no. see that he's given his portion with the hypocrites. Yes, so, yes, yeah. his judgment. So Master is too good for him, in other words. Well, he's past <clears throat> that point. He's rejected his calling. Yeah, so he's no, that's no longer an option for him. Yeah. There's no forgiveness for that. Meaning he's not going to go through the tribulation. Mm -hmm. he's, it, no. he's dealt with before the tribulation. Yes, <clears throat> way before. Because mm -hmm. basically he's done despot to the Holy Spirit in him. He stand <clears throat> in opposition knowingly. This is a teacher. This is a guy who has concepts of eternity <clears throat> that only a few, relatively speaking, others have. He's going to be held to a higher uh, 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 design, a higher price to pay to. Much is given, much is required. Do you understand that that is um, part of what can be considered as the unpardonable sin? Mm-hmm. Some combination to it as well. Yes, yes. It basically, it says it's almost it's impossible to renew him because he's stamping on the blood willfully, mm. knowing what the answer is, but refusing to receive it. So there's no, not no forgiveness for that. So literally, Mr. Jones, <coughs> he's in between getting his name pulled out. Then, well, the judgment when the Lord says, "I'll cut him off." That's it. That's when his name goes his name out. out right. <clears throat> because he's separated now from the body of Christ. It's as though he were never saved. So yeah. he's going to receive the judgment What's of the unsaved person. It's as if he is saved, but then he screws it up for himself and cancels out his opportunity. That's right. Brings so judgment on himself. Since it says he will be um, lost his portion with the hypocrites, hypocrites, that puts him in the Jeremiah 23, 1 and 2 category. Yes. It? So. Yes. Hell immediately appears over him. Is it over oh yeah, him? he becomes a denizen of the torment regions. Wow. That that may very well be the reason we've had such difficulty in this lesson. Quite possibly. It's a warning. Yeah, yeah, very steep warning. 